Friday, you've got a new episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society in your feed. What's going on? Yeah, don't panic. That's not normal. This is all part of the plan. I say maybe panic a little. <laughs> this is non-usual. <laughs> um, we have been doing a mini-series on our Patreon that we call NCS Detective Club. That's right. So uh, patrons at the 8 and 16-bit level are g- getting these episodes. They release once a month. And we've been talking about the great detective shows of television. Um, we have done Murder, She Wrote. Mm-hmm. We have done Monk, Diagnosis Murder. And we have an episode coming out next week on Psych. Which, and you know, all of this is very fun for us, right? Like, uh, Mark and I obviously like talking about um, Nintendo and, and video games. Um, it's, uh, you know, talking about Nintendo is like one of the ways that we stayed in touch during like a, a, a lull in our, our friendship where we just weren't uh, naturally running into each other. Um, but, you know, we're both very like TV minded, very like narrative kind of focused guys, right? Like, um, you know, we we met doing uh, improv together and would see a bunch of movies and stuff. So, like, talking about uh, stories and narrative and uh, TV and just, like, the industry is also something that is, like, very natural and normal and to us. And that we like to do. And that we like to do. Um, and so we, uh, we apply some of that to these uh, great old detective shows. Um, and, I mean, Mark, you've got a personal relationship to like the genre in in general, right? Yeah, that's true. And especially um, Murder, She Wrote. I have a deep, deep love for Murder, She Wrote. Right. Which uh, we're going to play a little bit of that episode today. Ooh, this is a preview. This has turned into a preview episode. Uh, we're going to give you a little slice of a conversation uh, that we had. And if it is uh, enjoyable to you, if this is something that you would like more of, you can check out the, uh, the rest of the miniseries. It's going to be available uh, uh, on our Patreon, um, patreon.com uh, slash Nintendo Cartridge Society. We are talking here about the episode Murder Takes the Bus. Um, and uh, we will, I guess, tarry no further and just hand it off to ourselves uh, about to tell you about this amazing episode of Murder, She Wrote. Uh, Mark, should we dig into our first episode? Uh, we're talking about Murder Takes the Bus, uh, season one, episode 19. Yes? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Uh, okay, so um, before we get into uh, even talking about the episode, can we talk about like the opening of this thing? Tonight on Murder, She Wrote. Well, first of all, there's that. Uh, that And like early Columbo does this as well, where instead of, because these shows aren't serialized, right? <clears throat> So instead of having to tell you what happened previously on the show, they just want to be like, there's just this little like teaser of like, here's little clips of uh, things that may excite you to watch for the next hour. Uh huh. What's up with that? Peak, I think it's exactly that. Just to like peak your interest, you know, keep you, keep you engaged. It's just so funny, especially so with. You'll sit through the commercials. So you'll sit through the commercials. I guess that that's it. Um, it's just so funny with like. Columbo, um, I'm I'm always like I'm watching the show because I like Columbo because I want to see what he's up to, um, and it's mostly clips of like other people doing stuff. And same thing in in Murder She Wrote, right? Where like we don't see too many of um of Jessica's actions because she is the steady ship, right? Everyone else freaks out around her, um, but it's just like oh, I just want to see what <laughs> what Jessica Fletcher is going to get up to in this episode. <laughs> I'm here, I'm committed, but I guess I get it. Uh, but the the uh, the opening of just like Jessica sitting at the typewriter, oh, like the opening um, credits, yeah, and like jogging through rural Maine and just that music, um, just sets it up to be like, don't worry, you're in for like the coziest hour you can experience. Yeah, the on TV. Uh, the theme song of Murder She Wrote is very good. Um, also one thing that doesn't come up in, cause I think she rides her bike in Mm -hmm. the, um, uh, opening in the opening. Yeah. And part of the reason why that's important is, uh, Jessica Fletcher doesn't drive. She doesn't drive. Yeah. Why would she have to if she lives in a town of fewer than 4,000 people? That has a taxi service, because she'll take taxis everywhere, or Seth will drive her, or she rides her bike. Right, right, She's living the good life. 
Uh, and at the beginning of this episode, uh, Murder Takes takes the Bus, um, Jessica and uh, uh, Amos are late for, or they, they, they are going to be late for this uh, uh, Sheriff's Association banquet, um, uh, and the police car has broken down. Uh, so they're not going to be able to drive, uh, so instead they're taking the bus. Uh, and I love, I love, 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 love the way and the time in which the title of this episode is deployed. Um, because usually the, it's like the first thing uh, when the episode appears, the title appears on the screen. So you you know what, what you're in for. But this one, we're, we're starting in like cold open territory. We don't know anything about the bus. Um, but, you know, the... Uh, Sheriff Tupper talks about how excited he is about going to this banquet, partially because of the TV or because of the the food, but also because they're raffling off a big screen <laughs> right. TV. And Jessica must be like the the a guest of honor. Like she's she's going to speak at this thing, yeah, um, because she's a murder mystery author. I guess but that's also a good get she's it, one of the most famous people in the world, clearly. <laughs> yeah, um, but I just it, I I bumped on this for a second because I was like, it's 1984. How big do you think this TV is? <laughs> How big is the big screen TV that they're that they're raffling off at this banquet? I think uh, twenty four inches. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> I mean, maybe. Like how 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 big how big is the TV? Not very big. Um, but then we go to the the bus depot where we start to like meet our players, right? Um, and this episode is so good and so patient about doling out who the the people that we're going to be dealing with for the next hour. Um. Uh, and and so the, the 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 first the first characters that we meet that we are like paying attention to is a couple who's like arguing about something mysterious, uh, and the the couple doesn't get named at this point, but I'm gonna go ahead and name yeah. them for for uh, simplicity's sake, Jane and Steve. Um, by the way, my friend Siri, her brother and sister in law named Stephen Jane. So I was like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> easy to remember, easy to remember, Stephen Jane. Jane is played by Linda, Linda Blair. Blair. Which, uh, again, one of the pleasures, one of the immense pleasures of uh, this show is seeing all of the guest stars in episodes yes. over the, like, 12 seasons, where there are a lot of guest stars, some pretty big mm -hmm. names. Um, well, not when, when the recurring cast is... Angela Lansbury, you know? yeah. <laughs> like you, you got to fill out the fill out the cast with uh, guest stars every week. But it's also fun if you are like a fan of classic movies. Mm -hmm. um, they get a lot of like old film stars to come in and play roles. Like uh, it's it's the casting is is a lot of times very fun in these episodes. And also, you know, like like watching a uh, like a Law and Order or whatever. That's also where um, you know a lot of like great theater actors uh end up getting roles uh in um in like episodes of these tv shows so they're actually like great performances that just like from actors who didn't hit on you know a, a tv or, or movie level um so like generally speaking the performances on the show are great um and i would say especially in this uh episode uh, murder takes the bus um great performances all around um but so, okay, so for, first we meet that couple. They're arguing about something mysterious. We don't really know what. Um, and then a folksy old man, uh, na uh, the character's name is Cyrus Leffingwell, which is the folksiest, most old man -y name I could imagine. <laughs> um, and he's like, he's a chatter, right? Like he, uh, he introduces himself to Jessica, um, who is also waiting for the bus. Um, she like he likes to take, quote, likes to take these local buses, um, uh, and Jessica says, like, oh, yeah, most people don't have time to, to take these buses. And he says, riding hard and fast towards a date with the gravekeeper. <laughs> this guy rules. <laughs> um, and uh, the, the, the bus pulls up. And uh, you know, the 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 couple, um, the the young couple gets on. Cyrus gets on, uh, and this is where the the bus driver um, comes out. And we have to note here: this is not Andy, the usual bus driver that Jessica knows and has a personal relationship with. Um, uh, and Mark, just get this. Okay, so this is the the bus to uh, Boston, making stops in Newcastle, Brunswick, Portland, Kennebuc, Dover, Portsmouth, Amesbury, Ip and Ipswich. Um, Ipswich, Mark. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I love these New Englandy names. <laughs> um, they make me laugh so much. Uh, my friend uh, Emma lives in Maine, um, and we would visit her, uh, visit like her parents' place in Maine uh, over the summers in college, and. Uh, they they're just like the, those Ipswich is one of those names that always stuck out to me as like fun then uh from when we would visit then uh Penobscot is another one and it's just like these names that it's just like mouthfuls of consonants uh -huh. um that are just so much fun to say um 
but yes, so we we note that Andy is not the normal bus driver. Uh, he uh, the bus driver says he has the flu. Uh, that Andy has the flu, uh, and then uh, we start to get like a little bit more uh, information about who all is on this bus as uh, Tupper and Fletcher get on. Uh, there is a uh, mysterious uh, sailor man in like a, a a black beret who like the camera lingers on. Uh-huh. It's like shifty, 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 uh, yep. shifty. Um, and then there is a like middle-aged couple. Uh, we don't get both their names here, but they are Miriam and Kent. And Miriam is played by Rue M- McCallan. McClanahan. McClanahan, thank you. Um, from Golden Girls. So again, uh, we... But this was before Golden Girls. Before Golden Girls yes, actually yeah. launched, yeah. Um, but uh, and, and the, this, this couple is like kind of sniping at each other right from the beginning. Uh, right, yeah. Their There's whole a- deal is that like uh, they both seem embittered that they're not more rich. They are yes. Well, and like they like to kind of poke at each other too. Yes. Because there's a part po- there's a part where uh, Miriam is like, well, "That's J.B. Fletcher," a- and uh, her husband looks up and is like, "Oh, I didn't recognize him." And she's like, mm, "It's her, uh, yeah. <laughs> her, not him." Um. So th- those are the those are the people that that we've met here on on, on the bus so far. Um. Uh. Where are we? And uh, so they go they go yeah. off. To their first stop, which is going to be Newcastle, Newcastle, and at this point, uh, it starts to rain. It starts to rain, starts and to rain very psycho inspired music. Yes, begins to play uh, because we also flash on a a, 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 a billboard that's like a uh, prison 300 feet 3000 feet whatever um and so they they pick up someone at this bus station uh charge them $9.60 oh the only thing i want to add yeah. is you mentioned that they don't show the title of the episode oh yes uh, at yes the thank ve- you at the very beginning like they do for most of them they wait until like the bus pulls out of the bus stop yeah that that with everyone is boarded the bus and the bus is driving away and then it says murder takes the bus and then like lightning strikes <laughs> and the psycho inspired music uh, kicks up it's awesome it's, <laughs> it's awesome I, I love it so much um and so the i also think it's, it's really smart the way that they um because we start we start the episode uh during the day um it's like kind of cloudy but it's not we are not in storm territory yet um and it's really over the course of these first like five or ten minutes that like it gets rainy it there's lightning and you know soon enough we're in like a, a full-on downpour uh maybe a hurricane i don't or yeah, I don't just know. A bad storm. Could be. I don't know. I mean, the the roads are about to flood, right? And uh-huh. like the electricity will go out. So like it's a bad storm. I guess it doesn't mean it has to be a hurricane. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they they pick up a a suspicious uh a guy suspiciously near um the the local prison. Uh it is played super ominously. Um and when uh he gets on the bus, we see that he's carrying uh, a book called the the night the hangman sang. Um, so like that, and these are all like little details that the camera is lingering on. Yeah, right? and when he gets on the bus, he like uh, the um, bus driver. You know, he's asking how much he gives the bus driver some money, and the bus driver kind of like gruff in a gruff way. It tells him like it's more than that. It's like nine sixty right to go to Portland, and then uh, as he's paying the bus driver, you know, again we linger on him looking around at the other passengers. It's and, loaded looks everywhere, and there's right? a moment clearly where like he sees something that disturbs him. Right. He sees something that disturbs him. Everyone is sort of reacting weirdly to this guy. But it's also like, you know, they picked up a guy outside the prison and it's like, okay, like, is this a, a prisoner? Right? Uh-huh. Um, is the question they're all dealing with. Uh, so and uh, this whole time, too, they're they're being followed by a, a white car. Um, un- unclear what, what what that's about. Um, th- so they they get kind of like the bus gets pulled over by like cops or safety guys or, you know, whatever. Uh, and they're like, they're uh, power lines are down and uh, there's been some flooding in the streets so like you got to be careful out there right um and uh so th- they 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 take the warning okay um and uh they they continue on their way and then they come across that same white car oh yeah that white car just sort of like passed him and like mm-hmm. zoomed by the, the 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 checkpoint um but they come upon him later um seemingly his car is uh busted couldn't handle the um the 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 rain the storm uh and when he boards the bus uh the bus driver calls him out immediately he's like hey were you following us and he was like yeah i I thought it'd be safer if like the bus was like cutting a a clear path through through the storm a solid story mark Uh uh-huh except jessica clocks him 
yep. wearing, uh, having a, He's got a, a holster. gun holster with a gun in it under his jacket. And she, she's just taking this information in, you know, yes. no, uh, not drawing any conclusions yet. But also, uh, Rue McClanahan's character comes over and is Miriam, kind of Miriam, yeah, and is, you know, saying, oh, uh, I'm just so excited to meet you. You're on my library's most stolen list of most books that get stolen list uh-huh stolen from the library and we're constantly having to replace your books right and so it's like just a planting in your head i'm associated with stealing books <laughs> just remember that and I, I i love uh jessica's reaction where she's like oh it's very flattering i think <laughs> like she's not sure how to take this compliment um so uh oh and then then this is when they pick up uh the the the, the man with the gun um uh, everyone has this nine dollars and sixty cents uh, for the bus to Portland. By the way, everyone has exact change. Perhaps a callback to the the pilot where Jessica doesn't have exact change for the bus. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, we see the uh, yeah the holster as as he stows his bag. Uh, then the bus pulls over outside of the cozy corner kitchen. Unfortunately. Every word in the name of this store starts with a K. Yeah, not good. It's not good. It's not good. So they're stopped at the KKK, uh, the Cozy kit, cozy Corner Kitchen. Um, uh, we've got a little engine trouble. Um, and Mark, I, I, I don't know if I wasn't hearing right, but I swear the bus driver says it's the engine wasn't holding up because of the wind. He says probably the wind. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't clock that. He makes some sort of excuse uh, <laughs> about the engine, uh, and uh, flimsy, he, flimsy, seemingly. flimsy. Yes, yeah. um, but they're right outside this uh, this diner. So, like, you know, who cares? Like, get out, get a cup of coffee. Um, of course, Sheriff Tupper uh, just worry, worried about the food that they're going to be missing at the banquet. Uh-huh. And again, I maybe my ears are playing tricks on me, but does he say we're going to miss the fruit cup? I think he did. I think a he, fruit cup. Yeah, he was like, oh, what was happening they're in nineteen eighty four? They're probably serving the fruit cup right about now. Uh, but yeah, pro- probably. But he just loves food. He does. He does yeah. love food. You're right, and that's something that I didn't appreciate enough as I was watching the episode <laughs> that he just loves food. Um. Uh, so the, uh, the, the young couple, um, Steve and Jane are still like, still arguing about something in, in, in the back of, in the back of the bus as everyone's getting off to, uh, you know, go hang out in this diner. Um, uh, he says, I told you to stay out of it. So like we're, we're clocking that there's like something fishy going on here. Um, also speaking of clocking, uh, Jessica Fletcher clocks that the, uh, there's a sign on the front of the bus that says, uh, your bus operator today is Ben Gibbons. Uh, she notices that we notice that we're putting pieces together. Um, uh, they're, they're all, uh, welcomed in to the, uh, cozy corner kitchen. Um, and, uh, Cyrus, the old folksy old man starts telling like stories like, ah, oh, reminds me of hurricane Agnes back in 72. Um, which the, uh, the owner of, of the diner also like clocks too. So like, there's a sense of like shared history. People know what happened in this area. 12 years ago, mm-hmm. 15 years ago. And Cyrus never throughout this entire thing like seems really bothered by anything like yeah, I mean very even keel. I don't really know if we ever get an understanding of why Cyrus is on the bus, but uh it seems it's very plausible point. to me that he d- uh he just, just likes, likes taking riding the bus, the bus <laughs> yeah. from place to place. I mean that that is what he says at the beginning of the episode is that he likes taking the bus. Yeah. So maybe that's just Maybe that's his whole deal. That's what he does. I also wonder if he's like narratively necessary. <laughs> like, I guess, yeah, because he's not even like a red herring at any no, point. No, he doesn't really play. Spoiler: any Cyrus role. didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so the uh, I I love uh, so Jessica or no uh, the two two different people order coffees uh, and that's the the owner's like oh I wish I would send everyone home but like he gets stressed out from two, the order of two coffees. <laughs> Jessica orders tea, I guess. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, again, we're, we're just like, the, the room is getting filled up with uh, everyone from the bus. Um, there's a little bit more bickering between uh, Miriam and the room, uh, M- McCall- McCallahan, McCallahan? McGinn or uh, the actress's M- name? McClanahan. McClanahan. I don't know why I can't uh, nail it down. McClanahan. Uh, between Miriam and um, Ken. 
uh, and he's telling them something about like, oh yeah, in, in this season, uh, rainy days are it's like two to one that it's going to be rainy. Yeah, he's a he's a college math professor, but it's right. clearly very important to him that people think he's like smart. Right. Well, and it's important to her that people don't think that he's <laughs> smart because she says, as you can see, my husband's mind is cluttered with useless trivia, uh-huh. and he snipes back better cluttered than an empty attic, uh, and then she snipes back if we could afford played fair, we wouldn't be stuck here right now. So. So, like, and that's when Cyrus does his little folksy thing where he's like, well, stuck here, stuck in an airport. I've done it both. What does it matter? That's true. Um, uh, and meanwhile, while, while all this is going on, Jessica catches uh, two people arguing in the bus. She can see them outside the window. Um, and it's maybe unclear exactly uh, who who it is on the bus. Um, but it, it's uh, I at the time I wrote, I think it's uh, Steve and the guy from the prison bus stop, and I, I, I was right. Nailed it. Uh, nailed it. Uh, uh, Tupper, Sheriff Tupper, Amos, continuing at this point to just list all the foods that he's missing uh, and w- the likelihood that it's, like, coming out right now. Uh, it's a fun running gag. Um, Steve asks for the phone, uh, and the o- owner of the, the diner says, yeah, there's a payphone outside. So we're establishing now there is a payphone outside. That's right. In the storm. <laughs> so if anyone wants to make a call, they have to go outside. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jessica and Amos get uh, a slice of pie. Um, and we get like a, a little bit of, uh, of, of a time lapse here uh, while, while they eat their, pi- <clears throat> eat their pie. Um, and then like Tupper steps out uh, to call Portland to let them know um, that they're going to, um, you know, that they're probably not going to be there. Or they're going to be late or whatever. Um, Jessica kind of like roots around is like, oh, I don't have my book. She returns to the bus. Uh, Several people clock her leaving the uh, leaving the diner to go back out to the bus. Uh, And when she uh, goes, when she gets out to the bus, the prison man is uh, sort of like slumped over in his seat. She walks up, realizes that he's been stabbed in the neck with a screwdriver. End of act one. There we go. It's a pretty good setup. It is a pretty good setup. It is very unlike most episodes of the show because this mm-hmm. is this is really like an Agatha Christie, you know, like uh, uh, one setting mystery. Yeah, and the rest of the show does not play like this at all. But it is a very it's a very good setup. It's a very good setup, and I think it still plays to the strengths of the Jessica Fletcher character. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, so uh, at, at after we come back from the commercials, um, and uh, Fletcher and Tupper are uh, Tupper are uh, examining the body, um, and I, I love the way she puts like a point on this. Uh, Fletcher goes, "The situation is obvious. You or I or one of them dot 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 <laughs> um, killed this guy." Uh huh. And the relationship between her and Tupper is such that like she has to kind of uh, guide him. Yes. A little bit on like what he should be doing. He's not incompetent. No. But he's just like kind of lacks the initiative. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh so whoever killed this guy went through his pockets but didn't steal any money. Uh someone was looking for something. Um, his suitcase is missing. Um uh Jessica determines that this guy definitely a prisoner who just got out of prison. He's wearing a new suit, he's got new shoes, he's got fresh new bills that he paid for the uh for the bus fare with. Um and uh, checking his wallet, we find out that th- this gentleman's name is Gilbert Stoner. Uh, strong names across the board. St- in this episode. Super strong names across the board. Uh, Miriam uh, boards the bus and freaks out, right? So it's like if they were ever going to control this information, uh, they lost it uh-huh. uh, because she comes like running back in and tells uh, everyone what's going on. Um, Cyrus, folks, the old man that he is, has tried to call the cops, but the phone lines are dead. Uh, we got us a closed door mystery. Um, and then uh, Tupper, like, assumes control of the... He's like, I have no jurisdiction here. However... <laughs> given the circumstances. Given the circumstances, I'm going to... Uh, I, I'm in charge. Uh, and I love how chill he remains through all of this, even while being like, I'm going to now investigate all of you for murder. <laughs> um, uh, Jessica uh, also, also at this point uh, introduces us to the concept of uh, this robbery that happened in Augusta 15 years ago. Right, that's right. Because Jessica, you know, as she does, mm-hmm. um, has to do research for her novels. Right. And it is a handy, you know, like uh, remembering device throughout the entire series. And here it is uh, helpful because she remembers that she came across the name Gilbert Stoner in research at some point. 
Right. Uh, and it's this robbery that happened at, at the Danvers Trust uh, Company uh, happened about 15 years ago. Um, Tupper, at this point, is like, yeah, 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 all right. We need to figure out who everyone is and why you're on the bus. This is when we get names, right? Right. Uh, so uh, we go around the room. We start with Ken and Miriam, uh, and they also can't help but snipe at each other during their introductions because uh, he introduces himself as like some like you know some level of math professor and uh she's like actually it's less impressive than that uh and he's like and my wife's a librarian she's like head librarian uh-huh. so like they're already like they're both trying to like downplay each other i also like that ken says it couldn't have been him because he was in the arcade playing roadhog roadhog um at, but and <laughs> at that point he's like it has challenging mathematical parameters also, it's fun. Um, I, I like there's like a moment of judgment where everyone was like, what's this guy up to? Um, then we move over to uh, Cyrus, who we already know Cyrus's deal. He's a folksy old man. Uh, another great place name here. He's from Woonsocket, Rhode Island. <laughs> Give me those New England names, baby. Uh, next, we're over to the young couple. This is where we get Steve's name, uh, I think for the first time, uh, and, and his wife, Jane. Uh, Steve is a computer engineer. Uh, they are on their way to Portland. Jane has been sitting at that table the whole time. Uh, uh, Jessica says that she saw Steve uh, having a heated discussion with the deceased, with Gilbert. Um, and he says, not at all. We exchanged a few words. That's all. So he kind of like blows that off. Um, next, we go to this, uh, the Black Beret sailor guy, um, Joe Downing. Um, he was heading back to his ship, the Mary Sue, out of uh, Gloucester. Again, great names. Um after visiting family, he, at the time of the murder, was having a drink in the bar. Um, the stranded man that they picked up in, from, from the white car is Kerry Drayson. Um, he was in the restroom. He actually, uh, when he came in, was, like, wearing a coat over, like, his shoulders and was like, where's the restroom? So, like, I kind of clocked him as, like, mm-hmm. we need to be suspicious of this guy. There's something going on there. Um he just goes like, I know this dude has a gun. <laughs> um, he has a permit to carry the gun uh, because he's a, a salesman and uh, a jewelry salesman. And so it's for protection. Right. Right. But uh, he refuses to give the gun up, refuses to give the gun up uh, uh, and also offers the the excuse. Uh, if I was going to knock this guy off, I would have shot him, not stabbed him with a screwdriver. Fair enough. S- solid. <laughs> like, can't, can't argue with that. Um uh, we talked to the bus driver uh, who was working on the engine the whole time. He thought he heard something um, like maybe someone stealing his tools but he, or people talking, but he wasn't says he wasn't really paying attention. And anyone could have sc- stolen the screwdriver because it was just out. It was just like, out it was just in yeah. his toolbox. Right. Which, again, also like makes perfect sense. Right. <clears throat> uh, they Jessica has a photograph from uh, Gilbert Stoner's uh, wallet uh, and sees that Steve is one of the people in this photograph. So already we're like, okay, you may not have killed this guy, but like you have a connection. To, you were on this bus because you expected him. Yeah. Right? Um, and Steve is like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't have to answer your questions, lady. There you go. I don't have to answer your questions, lady. And storms out. Right. Um, Jane, meanwhile, is like, no, I don't care. I'll, <laughs> I'll, is she, uh, is, is this character read is pregnant to you? Y- yes. I, I, th- think so they never talk about they it. never talk about so it. i'm just like is this a fashion choice to kind of have like it's a very a high-waisted dress and right yeah like, so maybe it's not a bump maybe it's just like the way the dress lays but yes reads is pregnant to me reads is pregnant and like kind of also just like feeds into this whole like young couple uh-huh. thing right um but jane will totally id the people in the photo <laughs> uh one of them is is steve's father who was killed in the danvers trust robbery and so this is the part ago. that i think was initially i was like oh this is confusing but it, i don't think it's actually supposed to be steve in the photograph i think it's his father oh who looks that makes steve sense looks like his father okay and so that's why but just because like this is you in the photograph but then jane is like it's it's his father it's his father that, that's, that's how i read it anyways. okay no that makes sense um uh and so is this where like everyone just like starts talking about this this Danvers thing? Because yeah. we get more information here that an innocent bystander was also killed. Yeah, so it was like in Steve's, the robbery. There were three people yeah. involved in the robbery. Uh Stoner, the guy who died on the bus, who mm-hmm. was in prison, just got out of prison. Steve's dad, who died during the robbery. During the robbery. And then a third mysterious man that they never caught. Right. And they don't know. Nobody knows who it was. Right. He um, got away uh-huh. with uh, the uh, the uh, cafe owner says uh, $200,000. Jane says it's more like half a million. Yep. 
And uh, but like you said, an innocent bystander, a young woman, mm-hmm. uh, was killed as well. Right. Um. So we know who, we know now who everyone in the room is, or so we think. Um. And so it's kind of like reset time, right? Uh, and Jessica is like wandering around. She uh puts a quarter in Roadhog. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica so, likes Roadhog. Why not? Why wouldn't you like Roadhog? Is Roadhog a real arcade game? I, don't I didn't think look it's it up. A real, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it could be though. It sounds like it definitely could be. 84, so it's probably not a great arcade game, <laughs> no. right? Um, uh, so from, from like the arcade area, wherever the uh, arcade machines are, there's a hallway outside, um, which means that either Ken or Cyrus, who was back there making a phone call, could have easily accessed the bus without being seen. Um, also, uh, this doesn't really come up, but the game continues to make noise after Jessica steps away from it. So the fact that Cyrus was like, I heard him back there playing the game, Kind of doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, But it ends up not really being uh, material here. Um, Fletcher and Tupper go back to the uh, the uh, the bus to investigate the crime scene further, Um, and they check out like the the console on the bus, and there's a a a damper switch light that is like flashing, and uh, Amos is like, "I know what that means. I was a bus driver for a summer before I joined the force." (laughs) That's right. Um, uh, Jessica goes, uh, back around the building. Um, she's like trying a couple doors. Um, the first one is locked. The second one leads right into the kitchen where we see, is his name Ralph? Yeah. Um, uh, Ralph is like putting mayo on some bread or something. He's like, he's preparing food, I guess. Um, but so anyway, that door has access to the outside and is unlocked. Uh, she continues around the building to find Stoner's open suitcase, uh, which has been tossed and is filling with rainwater. Uh, and then, like, over her shoulder, here comes Steve. Uh, and he's like, you know, it's a dun-dun-dun kind of situation. Cut to commercial. Uh, back from commercial, uh, Steve just wants to talk to Jessica. And is like, look, back there when you, like, confronted me about who was in the picture, I lost my temper, but I didn't kill Stoner. Mark, at this point, do you believe this guy? I, I, if Jessica believe, here's the thing. Jessica Fletcher is wrong all the time. And yet, <laughs> I, like she really is, She's right? a good compass though, yeah. <laughs> but, and, and yet, if she didn't, doesn't believe that somebody did it, I don't believe that somebody did it. Uh, so, uh, I, I, our, our A-team here, uh, Jessica and uh, Amos are investigating the suitcase. The clothes have all been like ripped apart. as Like someone was looking for something within the clothes, right? Um, Let's see. But they but they notice that Stoner's overcoat and book are are missing. missing. Right. Not not present in in the, in the suitcase. Um uh, uh so Steve says that he was confronting Stoner to get his father's share of the money. Yeah, he kind of fesses up, you he know. Kind of He's fesses saying up, yeah. that uh once my dad died doing this bank robbery, my life was miserable. Right. And, you know, now that uh, Stoner was out, I was here to confront him to get my share of the money because I've earned it. Right. But it's it's not, he's not saying that, like, he wanted revenge. Right. He just wants his dad's share of the money. Restitution. Um, but talking to Stoner uh, changed his mind because this uh, the scheme ruined his life. He says his scheme ruined his life just like it ruined my father's. Uh, so he left him al- uh, left him alone on the bus. Um, so yeah, seemingly like that motive uh, is clear, right? Uh-huh. And makes sense that like he just wanted to get this money. Realize this guy was just as messed up from this thing as as he was. And although it's it seems like because we learn later that it's like Stoner do- seems to have zero remorse. Like he's right. messed up in the way where he's like. Yeah, I did it, and I did my time, and now I'm out. Like he's like hard. He's been yes. like hardened in prison. Well, later he's going to be described as uh, stone mean or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, uh-huh. I wrote I wrote it down. We'll we'll get to it when we get to it. Um, but uh, you know, obviously they're like, well, wait, how did you know he was going to be on this bus? And uh, Steve's like, oh, uh, Stoner's release was in the newspaper, and the article announcing that this guy is uh, being released is borderline irresponsible, don't you think? <laughs> Because it's like it's like this guy they're who doxing did this him. thing. Yeah, they're doxing him hard. <laughs> um, so uh, the he hands the Jessica the newspaper article, uh, and she's reading it. Uh, and of course, it recaps the original crime, including innocent bystander Julie Gibbons, sixteen, was killed. Jessica clocks that Gibbons. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've we've met the bus driver whose name is Ben Gibbons. Now we know that Julie Gibbons, who was sixteen at the time, was murdered. So we're starting to put pieces together. Okay. 
And if you want to know how that episode ends, uh, you just got to go over to patreon.com uh, slash Nintendo Cartridge Society. And in addition to NCS Detective Club, there will be different mini series in the future. That's right. Plus uh, a bunch of other great rewards up there on Patreon. So go check it out. And one, one of those rewards is the ability to vote on what the next mini series is. That's right. That's very true. So we're going to be doing six of these episodes. And then, Mark, something else. <laughs> something else. Something else. That's something else. Maybe a second season of NCS Detective Club. Uh, who knows? Who knows? We don't know yet. It's in your hands. Or it could be if you become a patron at the 8 or 16 bit tier. Uh, thank you for listening. No matter how you're listening, no matter how you're supporting, we appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, thanks for listening. Yeah. Bye.